Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson, this is Maker Size. In this episode, I add functionality to turn my garage lights on and off with my phone while preserving the existing functionality of the switches in the garage. Okay, so I may have gotten a little carried away with the special effects, but just to prove to you this thing actually works, there's a circuit in the back of my garage that works on the light, a circuit in the front of my garage that works on the light switch, and there's two light switches for both the front and the back. The other one's in the hall, I'll skip that one, uh, but the other switch for the front side is right here. I installed this box with electronics that gives me the ability to control either via a phone or a computer, both the back lighting circuit and the front lighting circuit, and it gives me the ability to put it on a timer. I designed the panel layout using LibreCAD, and I designed the schematic and board layout using KiCAD. The brain of the system is a beagle bone black with a custom expansion board. Before I wire it up, I want to go into a little bit of detail about the custom expansion board for the BeagleBone Black. I print the circuit onto photo paper using a laser printer, and then I transfer the toner to the circuit board using heat. I soak the board in water, peel off the photo paper, and then I can use hydrogen peroxide, muriatic acid, which contains hydrochloric acid, some appropriately blinged out PPE, courtesy of my sister. I mix those together, and then I let the board soak. The exposed copper dissolves, and then I can remove the toner. I use drill bits to drill holes into the board that are sized based on the parts that I've got to use. Then I cut the board up into pieces, and I start to mount the small components. Some of them require modification. Then I solder those components into place, these boards are really helpful for the surface mount devices because then I can plug them into a breadboard for testing. I wired up a small potential transformer as well as the current transformer to the breadboard and then I plugged in the heater to a meter clamped on my CT then I could measure the low voltage produced by the instrument transformers. You should check out the detailed article on Makersize.com. I've got schematics as well as a panel layout available for download. There's a link in the description below. After I felt comfortable with my process as well as my design, I printed the final circuit onto photo paper, transferred it to the board, and then I drilled some holes to confirm alignment. It wasn't good enough, so I had to start over. Rough up the board using some sandpaper, then I use acetone to make sure I've got all the oils off the board. I turn up the darkness setting on my printer to ensure I get a lot of toner. I tape the photo paper onto a sheet that I've already printed, and that way I know that the printer will be well aligned with the piece of paper. During round two, I used pins to try to ensure good alignment between the pattern and the board. This double-sided business is kind of tricky. First, I use an iron, and that causes the toner to melt just enough to keep the paper sticking to the copper. Then I trim up the edges and run it through a laminator like 60 times. After that, I drop it in water, let it soak for about 20 minutes, and I peel off the paper. It's a good looking board. But it does have some defects, so I can clean those up using a Sharpie. I warm up the solution, and then I drop the board in to let it etch. If you'd like more details on the hydrochloric acid hydrogen peroxide etching process, you should definitely check out Flash 001 USA's video on the subject. I've got a link in the description. Clean up the board with some steel wool and a bandsaw. Then I drill my holes and apply solder paste for the surface mount components. To ensure alignment between the pins uh, that I soldered into the expansion board, I first put those pins into the sockets on the Beagle Bone Black, and then I put the board onto the pins. Then I was able to solder the pins in place using the sockets on the Beagle Bone Black to fixture those pins while they're being soldered. Now this was a near miss. I just about soldered those components on the wrong side of the board. This was the first in a series of near misses and failures. When I created the part in KiCad for the transistors, 
I actually swapped two of the pins. That created a mirroring error in the board layout. Mirroring errors are really painful. And fortunately for me, about that time, Cactus Workshop posted a video on a rubber stamp that he made where he had a mirroring error and failed. And that kind of encouraged me to just move on with the process and fix the mirroring error. I initially started out by trying to use a utility knife to change the actual copper traces on the board, but then I had an epiphany. The epiphany was that I could flip the part over and that fixes the mirroring problem. You just, you just flip the part over. After I fixed that, I found a floating ground pad, then I fixed that, then I tested the latching relays on the expansion board. I wired up the low voltage potential transformer and was going to compare it to the mains when BAM! The O-scope grounds are at earth ground on my O-scope. Fortunately, the brand new O-scope was okay. I resumed testing, finished that up, and then I proceeded with wiring the box. I try to use connectors whenever possible since this simplifies any troubleshooting that I have to do later on. Finished wiring it up, and I really like this method of using quick disconnects to attach the wall wart to the circuit. That keeps me from having to tear stuff apart, but it gives me a nice way to get DC power to the BeagleBone Black. I attached it in the back of the cabinet and plugged it in. Initially I was using solid number 12, but quickly switched to stranded since it's so much more flexible. In the tight spaces, you really need that flexibility. Attach the CT around two loops of wire so that way I get twice the amount of current through the CT. I wired up the high current relays, ohmed out the circuit to make sure it was right, then I realized I didn't have any holes in the box. So I covered up the sensitive stuff, drilled the holes, cleaned up the shavings, and unwrapped the sensitive stuff. Then I installed cable clamps through the holes. Then I wired up some temporary stuff. I wired in a temporary power cord per the plans. And then I wired in a temporary receptacle so I could attach my heater so I could check out the current transformer circuits. I pretty quickly was able to write code to turn on and off the heater using the relays in the cabinet. But then it took me a little while longer to get the analog waveforms. The BeagleBone Black has programmable real-time units that can interface with the analog to digital converters. You can see when I switch the heater on, the voltage drops and the current goes up. After I had the code written, it's was back to the basement for the install. I pulled out the temporary stuff and cut up some boards to mount the box into the ceiling, drilled my holes, pulled the wire, and wired it in. I have a previous video that goes into a lot of depth with multi-way circuits, uh, and it also shows how a relay plays into that circuit. Despite my recommendations in my multi-way switching video, I tried to wing it when I wired up this box, and it didn't work. I did a little bit of troubleshooting before I decided, hey, I'll just use my own printable to diagram this thing out. Once I did that, I found the problem. I fixed it very quickly and, uh, and it works just fine now. So I hope this video inspires you to exercise your inner maker. If you like the video, click the like button. Leave me some comments with your feedback. Appreciate it and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.